All right, time to get some dry brushing done. Now I've got the P3 Morrow white back, and I've got my small dry brush here. Now this one, you can go kind of quick on it if you want, but you want to just sit back, take your time, and you'll, you'll notice I've switched to the filthy side again so I can actually see how much white I'm brushing off of my brush as I do it. You want to make sure you have just a minuscule amount of paint on the brush for this. You don't want too much or what's going to wind up happening is it comes off too white and it'll mess the whole thing up. So, On the arms, again this is just a quick motion. Here's all you do. Just up and down like this. And you'll want to do that until you can see the white popping up on the high points of the housing. Same thing for the other sides. Twist it, run the brush over it very quickly. Nothing to it. Then make sure you're only getting a minuscule amount of paint on here because it sucks when you, you put too much and you, you mess the whole thing up and you got to go back and redo it. Now for the inside of that toweling there, you just take the brush and you bop it up and down just as fast as you, know, as you feel comfortable with until you can start to see the white pop up on the high points and get that look that you're going for there. You just keep going until you feel comfortable because again, I've said it once, I'll say it a thousand times, this is your miniature so it really just is going to look how you want it to look. Now, that should be about right. That may be just a little too white there but all in all, it's on the inside, so it's not going to be that big of a deal. Now with the armbands, same idea here. Make sure you get most of that paint off. And you'll just want to brush this one toward you. And go up and down if you like. Try to keep a control on this brush so you don't end up hitting any of this green stuff that you don't want to hit. On this one you can just, on the underside of it here, just brush away from you. You can go back and forth again if you like. Just get as much of it as you feel like you need to get. Focus up. Okay. Now, you are going to want to do a little bit of a dry brush on that pig iron area there, but just, you know, a very light one, so I'm going to bust out the pig iron again. And I'm not going to clear my brush off because I've got very little white paint on there anyway, so it's really not going to show through this dark stuff here. Put a little bit on there. And I like to brush it over the white areas. Quick test. Seems legit. Now with this, you gotta be real careful because this is the smallest dry brush I've got. If you've got one smaller than this, you know, go for it, but you just wanna hit That silver part right in there. Yeah. And that's basically it for the arms. Now we have, you know, a matching set of arms there. Looks pretty good. 
So we're going to go ahead and dip the brush in the water now to clear it off. And I'm going to switch over to my semi-clean side here. All right, and now we conquer some of the last bits we have to go. I'm going to work on this hood with the kids left flesh one more time. And for this one, I'm going to use my large base coat brush only because I want to cover a decent area in a quick amount of time here. I'm going to thin, you know, get some water so I can thin it out. And this one in small strokes will cover a lot larger of an area. And don't worry if you get some paint in that cockpit glass area there because we're going to go over that in a different color anyway so it won't really matter too terribly much. Just take the kids left flesh and paint it toward you. And we're going to wash it again so if it's you know appropriately thin it should just go right on there. You can darken that up just as much as you feel like you need. And just get as much of the, the broad areas as you can and don't worry about the sides of it. You can use a small detail brush to pick all that up later and tighten it up and make it look good. For right now we're just trying to get the big areas here. You just want to go back and forth. Just be careful with what you're doing. Don't go too fast. Don't feel like you got to speed it up. I'm only using this big brush to just cover a wider range in a shorter amount of time, but that doesn't mean I'm going to get reckless with it. And if you don't hit every single thing on the hood here with this brush, that's okay because we're going to come back to it here in a minute. So you're just trying to hit as much of this as possible and then we can come back with a detail brush and just kind of score everything else that we missed. So I got a piece of flash here on the front that I didn't see the first time. And precisely why you want to keep a pair of fingernail clippers like that handy. In case you come upon something like that. Just going to take my brush here and make sure I've gotten all the large areas that I can get with this because the rest of it is going to be detail work. What I'm doing here is if you ever feel like your paint is too thick in one particular area or the other, you can put a little bit of water on your brush and paint it on there and thin it out so that you can see a little more of the detail in what you're doing. Now, this is about how it should look before you grab a detail brush. Notice it looks kind of sloppy, it looks kind of messy, that's okay. We're going to tighten that all up here in just a second with a detail brush and I'm going to take a break here and come back once I'm all finished. Alrighty, time for a little more dry brushing. Now before I get 
too far into it. I want you to see what this hood looks like. You'll notice I've gotten in there on the cockpit and that's okay. I've left a lot of this underside of that green because I want that shade to stay in there. And then once we do that, we'll dry brush the calves and the knee joint there. Get your white. I've got a little bit of green over here on my towel so I can at least see how much of this I've brushed off by using that. There's a guide. Again, you don't want a lot. And if you're ever not sure about it, just give it a test swipe real fast and you can see what you've got. A little bit on there, but I could use a little more. Remember, you can always put more paint on the brush, but it's hard to get it off once you put it on there and you've got to go back over something and fix it. Real quick. You don't want to spend too much time on any one particular area, otherwise you'll flood it with white. Well, that's just no bueno for anybody. Especially you. Then you'll have to go back and fix it. Real quick. See as many highlights as you feel like you need to. Move on. Get a good look at that. Now once I get that cockpit done, you'll be able to see that white a lot easier. Now let's do the calves. Same motion here, just real quick. And we want to hit the outer edges of it.
Boom. Now what I'm going to do on this hood right here is I'm going to wash it with the Seraphim Sepia after I dry brushed it because I want the wash to sort of mellow out that sharp white contrast there. So that's what I'm going to get. We're done with the dry brush for the time being. And I'm going to use my medium, or large I should say, base brush. You'll see the effect I'm talking about here in just a sec. Get a decent amount on there. Make sure you hit as many of the areas as you want. And this will give you a pretty good idea of what I'm talking about. Now you see how you can still see, if I could focus up here, you can still see that white. but it's not quite as sharp. Well, that's what we're gonna do to all of this stuff. And it's gonna mellow all that out a little bit so it won't look quite as sharp and pow, right in your face. So I'm gonna stop here and come back once I'm done with that. Okay, here we are. There. And that all feels just a little bit warmer to me. You can still see the dry brushing though, and that's the important thing. You haven't covered it up with that wash. Now we're going to work on this cockpit area right here. And we'll get that little U-shaped thing up there. And we'll be done. Alright, we're getting closer and closer. So here's what I'm going to focus on right now is that little U-shaped thing right there. And we're talking about this whole area right here. Right there. Now, this is when I'm going to want to break out my extra fine detail brush here, plus my usual small detail brush. Got the Kislev out, got the Seraphim Sepia for the wash later. Now this one, because it's such a small area, you want it real tight, real careful. And you're definitely going to want to want to thin, you know, the paint out to get some water in that brush there. And uh, make sure you got a decent level of water in there. Dab on the end, and what we're going to do is cover the big parts with this brush, and then use the extra fine detail brush just to get all of the edges and things like that, so I don't accidentally go over onto the green that I don't want to get. I'm going to turn it. So the mech faces me, and then I can just tilt it toward me, and brush side to side on the bottom of it. And like I say here, you're not trying to get every single part of this with this brush. You want to save a little bit for that extra fine detail brush so that you can round off the edges with it. And then on the uh, vertical parts you want to brush toward you. I'm trying to find a way to do this so my hand doesn't obscure what I'm doing, but being on my own, there's really not a whole lot I can do about that, so I apologize in advance. Low and steady, just short, 
brush strokes to make sure you get the big areas. Like I say, just brushing toward you on the vertical parts and brushing either back and forth or away from you on the horizontal part. So before I hit it with that detail brush, it should look kind of like that. You know, no problem. And then I'm going to break out this small brush and I'm going to take a pause here and come back once I've done all of the outside edges with that detail brush. Let's get a quick look. There we go. And you'll notice I didn't get the little sides of it there. I want that stuff to stay green because I want the darker wash, the Bealton green, to stay there as kind of a shade. I only want to hit the top of that. Some other people might do it differently, but that's just how I want to do it. Now, when I go for the wash, I'm going to use the same small detail brush that I used before because I've got a far smaller area that I want to work with here so I don't want to go too big and get that stuff all over the green bits that I'd really rather not have to fix so I'll get a decent amount of wash on this brush and just I'll paint it the same way that I put the his left flesh on there is just paint it toward me and I'm not trying to get the outer edges I just want anything that I painted in the kids left flesh color that's it and then I'll paint horizontally on the horizontal area. And just put as much on there as you feel like you need to give it the color that you want. To me, that looks pretty good. I like so, and then we're going to let that dry, dry brush it, do the cockpit, and then we'll be ready to put some flocking on it and be done. Time for a little dry brush action here. Got your small dry brush once again, and the Morrow White. See there? Now, this is going to require a lot more precision out of you, so just make sure you have just very little actual paint left on the brush. You don't want to go too overboard here. Just take the neck and you're just going to dust off the top area here. You're not going to go back and forth or up and down. You're just going to go dip, 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 just real short. Just try to get that particular area and that's it. You don't want to hit that green. You don't want to get it on the missile racks here. Anything like that. And this doesn't require a lot either. Uh, I would definitely suggest a less is more type of approach on this particular area more so than the other areas anyway Flip it around and do it the other direction. And that's focus. There we go. Really what you're looking for. 
All right, now let's talk about the cockpit. On the cockpit, you'll want to bust out the super small detail brush once again. And this time, we're going to break out the moot green. I was originally thinking about doing the cockpit in red, but I decided because it's Jade Falcon, we're going to stick with the green here. Because it allows me to do a little bit more of a cool effect with some washes, which is why I want to do it that way. Now this is going to require a lot of precision out of you, so you got to have something real small. I'm not even really going to thin this out that much because in the end, after I put the wash over it and all that stuff, it's not going to matter that much. But you're just going to have to work in the smallest amounts here. Just take a very tiny amount, even for a brush this small, on the end and try to work it in the areas without hitting the outside of it. It's kind of hard to explain. But I'm going to do this middle part here so you can get kind of an idea of, of what I'm talking about. Slow, slow, slow on this. You don't want to go too fast and then, oh, well, now you've got to fix a bunch of stuff. And you don't have to worry about covering every last inch of this because when you put the, the wash on it later, it's going to fill in a good amount of that negative space there, which you'll see what I'm talking about. Here in just a sec. Perfect. Right. Now, that's about as much of that as I really want to cover because when I put the wash in there, it's going to fill up all those spaces around it. And if you do it right, you won't even know that you didn't paint it. So, what I'm going to do is get that side and that side and come back and show you the wash technique. I'm also going to get the nose here inside there same way as I do the top and I'll be back with the Ethonian camo shade wash. All right let's get a good look at that. Now I want you to look here and see just how little of these areas I've actually gotten. You'll notice I didn't get every square inch of that and I've said it, you know, several times during this video, don't worry about getting every last little inch because the wash is going to do a lot for you here. So you'll want to break out the Ethonian Camo Shade wash and you'll want to break out the Null Oil for this one. And we'll use the small detail brush for this job. The first thing I'm going to do is take the Camo Shade and I want this to be undiluted for this job. So I'm not going to thin it, get any water in it, anything like that. And I'm going to put a generous amount on this, you know, for this brush anyway. And I'm just going to dip it right into those windows. And gravity will do a lot of that work for me. I'll just drop it right in there. And it's already starting to fill those areas that I missed before. And if you get too much in there, just dry it off on your towel and dip the brush back in that area and the brush will soak up some of that wash. Now, this effect here is perfect. I want you to look at that. Boom, the wash has gotten in there. And you can still see a little bit of that Kislev flesh, but that's what the Null Oil is for. And when we put that in there, it'll cover the entire thing up. So, it's already doing what I want it to do. And if you have to put a couple of different, you know, coats of camo shade in there to get the effect that you want, 
There's nothing wrong with that. And as I say, all you gotta do is dip it in there. You don't have to, you know, brush it too much or The wash will do all of this work for you. That's what I love so much about this stuff. And it doesn't even take a lot either. I mean, a little bit of this stuff will go a very long way for you. And there's really no technique to that. It's just dipping it in there and the wash does all the work. Let's get a good look. Boom shakalaka. Starting to come together and like I say, you can still see a little bit of that Kislev flesh. Don't worry about it. When this dries, we'll come back with the null oil and it'll take care of anything that you can still see and darken up the rest of it and give it sort of a glow. You're going to love it. We'll be right back.